Hello everyone, this is Jacob Ames, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, here today to help you avoid ill-fitting assembly components in SolidWorks. Who's never manufactured a part only to find it doesn't fit properly in an assembly? Or perhaps you've completed an assembly only to discover that components don't have adequate range of motion for proper function. It happens to the best of us and you likely already know how frustrating bad components can be. But fortunately, SolidWorks provides several tools for checking the form, fit, and function of your assembly components prior to manufacturing, helping you avoid design rework and heartache. So in this video, we cover three of the most important strategies in this tool set. Visual inspection of components, interference detection, and collision detection. And we're going to do it all using this 1950s style retro refrigerator design. So let's get right to it with step number one, looking for obvious interferences using graphical techniques. Major interferences are often easy to spot with a simple visual inspection of the model. Using the default shaded with edges display style, be on the lookout for missing edges between components where you expect edges to be, like you can see here between the crisper and the back of the fridge. Notice how there's no edge to highlight or select. That's a sign of interference. Additionally, if you're using a variety of colors or appearances in your model, you may notice different colors bleeding through one another in a funny looking pattern as shown on the outside of the fridge. Both of these symptoms typically indicate interference between components and in many cases don't require any special tools to identify. And fortunately we can fix these interferences with a couple made adjustments. You might also consider switching the display style to hidden lines visible or maybe taking a section view to visually check for interferences that may otherwise be obscured in the shaded with edges display style. Both of these approaches show interference between shelves when the fridge is in the closed position, and we'll get to fixing that later, but because these components only interfere in the closed position, they would be impossible to see without a section view or an alternate display style or some other tool. So visual inspection is a great first pass analysis for finding interferences, but in many cases, especially small instances of interference may still sneak by, and even the tiniest interference can be the difference between a product that works and a product that goes in the trash. So this takes us to step number two. Use the interference detection tool in important assembly positions. The interference detection tool is indispensable when it comes to finding component interference, especially when they're small or when you're working in a very large assembly. To activate it, access the Evaluate tab in the Command Manager and click on Interference Detection. The Property Manager has several options, many of which are self-explanatory, but some of them may require a bit of clarification. For example, treat subassemblies as components, we'll view subassemblies as single components so that interferences between a subassembly's components are not detected. Additionally, creating a fasteners folder separates interferences between fasteners, like a nut and a bolt, into a separate folder because these interferences are generally ignored. So that's a couple of these options. Uh, and remember, for many property managers, including this one, the SolidWorks help file for this topic can be accessed by clicking the little question mark icon at the top right of the menu, and this can be very helpful for understanding the available options. If you don't have anything pre-selected when initiating interference detection, the whole assembly will be analyzed by default. This is great for small to medium assemblies, but for larger assemblies, it's best practice to clear the assembly from the selected components window and choose a few that you're interested in for faster performance, because especially with large assemblies, this process can take a while to calculate. Once you've chosen your components, if desired, and you've set the proper options, simply click Calculate and watch as SolidWorks does the heavy lifting for you. Here we can see several instances of interference that may have otherwise gone undetected, and we have all the information we need to make adjustments to our design for the perfect fit. I always recommend at least two iterations of interference detection as design adjustments are being made to ensure design changes haven't resulted in new unintended interferences. Intentional or inconsequential interferences may also be selectively disregarded by selecting them and then clicking the ignore button. It looks like we may be in a bit of trouble with the fridge design, but some quick mate and dimension adjustments should take care of it. Now interference detection is great, but it's only good at assessing assemblies in specific positions. For assemblies that include some form of motion, there may still be instances of interference that go undetected. When assemblies include moving parts, it's necessary to look for interferences throughout the range of motion of components. For this task, the static fixed position nature of interference detection won't quite cut it, unless you feel like performing a hundred iterations at different component positions and hoping for the best, and I'm guessing that doesn't sound very fun. So this takes us to step three. Use collision detection to check for interferences throughout the range of motion. 
Now, this step is unnecessary for assemblies that don't have any moving parts, but it's going to be absolutely critical for those that do. Interferences often go undetected because they only reveal themselves in very specific positions, often somewhere between open and closed positions like we have here with the fridge. Collision detection can solve this issue for us by dynamically checking for a component contact as the components move through space. This tool can also be used as a general check for total range of motion. So we're going to see uh, if there's any issues when trying to shut our fridge doors and also figure out how far they can open. First things first though, the collision detection tool does not have its own dedicated command. So you won't find it on the command manager or the drop down menus, you can't even search for it because it's actually an option that has to be enabled in the move component command. So you're looking for the move component command. Navigate to the assembly tab of the command manager, select move component, and then from here, ensure that the collision detection option is enabled in the property manager. This is critical. Like interference detection, there are a handful of options worth considering. By default, collisions between all components will be considered, and this may work well for smaller assemblies, but even for medium-sized assemblies, unless you have some really good hardware, uh, it'll likely require the selection of the These Components option in order to limit the scope of collision detection and, and improve performance. To use These Components, just turn the option on, then select the components you'd like to analyze, and then click Resume Drag to continue. Then, to check for collisions, click and drag components throughout their range of motion. By default, components will stop moving once a collision has been detected, and the colliding faces will highlight as seen here. It's also worth noting that you may need to hide components before using collision detection to clearly see what's happening and which faces are actually colliding. As you can imagine, collision detection is extremely helpful for finding interferences that may otherwise go unnoticed if an assembly is only analyzed in specific positions. And now, it's time for a pro tip for our advanced users out there. You can even attach reference dimensions to model geometry and then use collision detection to quantify range of motion in exact values. Here, I've added an angular reference dimension between faces of the fridge body and one of the fridge doors to check how far they'll open with collision detection, and that's good enough for me. In summary, if you want to be absolutely sure of the form, fit, and function of your assembly components, all three of the tools discussed here should be employed regularly, at least if your assemblies include motion. Begin with a visual inspection, looking for missing edges, bleeding colors, and obvious interferences. Then follow up with interference detection and important assembly positions. Finally, if motion is a concern, finish up by using collision detection throughout the range of motion. With these three tools in your utility belt, you can rest easy knowing that if it doesn't fit, well hey, at least it's not your fault. Do you have any additional tips or tricks for making sure assembly components fit together properly? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you'd like to see more SolidWorks tips and tricks from us, make sure to subscribe and visit us at hawkridgesys.com. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.